Welcome to the review. Today we're taking a look at 10 cartoons from 1992 that only ran for one season. Thanks for taking a trip down memory lane. Leave us a comment below if you remember watching any of these. Number 10, Stunt Dogs. Stunt Dogs! An action adventure comedy surrounding the frenzied hijinks of the Stunt Dogs. A troop of successful stunt doubles and aptly named mascot dog, Human, who at times could be very human-like indeed. Their band led by Daring Needham, named after actual stuntman and film director Hal Needham, consisting of Splat, the airplane stunt specialist, Crash, who operated in car wrecks, the firebug, Sizzle, clad in trademark skin-tight attire, and the green newcomer motorcycle enthusiast, Skid. Half-hour episodes would find the bunch facing off against their arch-rival, the Stunt Scabs. Needham and the Stunt Dogs shall be the first semi-humans to feel the power of the super-duper Sucker Walker! Yeah! A delinquent and unreliable crew of daredevils under the employ of the show's consistent villain and shoddy studio owner, Richard Don't Call Me Dick Fungus. And when we do, I'll give odds that we'll be staring up the hairy nostrils of old Dick Fungus. Creative to say the least, even the baddies came with clever nicknames like Airball, Half a Mind, and Bad Year. The series premiered on September 28th, and unlike many of the cartoon titles that failed to see a second season, this one managed to last through to June and finish out all 40 prepared episodes, meaning many will have caught at least a glimpse of Stunt Dogs on ABC just before Beetlejuice. You're evil, Fungus. Compliments will get you nowhere, you, 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 you athletically trained woman of the 90s. Number 9, Fish Police. If New York is the melting pot, then Fish City can only be described as the Kuyu base. Based on a comic book series that ran from 1985 to 1991, and taking place in a fictional seafloor metropolis, comes a pun-filled series featuring film noir theme plots and dialogue. Boasting a host of discernible voiceover actors led by John Ritter as Inspector Gill, a detective investigating mob-related crimes and skirting the efforts of beguilement by Angel Jones. Who needs a widow when you got a dame who can ID any guy in town? First airing on Valentine's Day and broadcasting three episodes to low ratings, and claims that it was missing the dark edge humor of its original source material. Entertainment Weekly citing their plots worked as mysteries, whereas here the stories were just excuses for more fish humor. Earning anywhere from mixed to abysmal reviews, Fish Police dried up on that third episode, and the three unaired installments were only later broadcast exclusively to European audiences. Carrying a more mature tone than other Hanna-Barbera works, Fish Police often contain innuendo and mild profanity. Crab, you always have an opinion. What do you think about that? If I thought about that, I wouldn't be able to walk sideways for a month. That didn't fare as well in America at the time. The show was one of several attempts by multiple networks to do battle with the ratings giant The Simpsons. Others included ABC's Capital Critters and CBS Family Dog. The comics creator himself was quoted as saying, the less said about the animated series, the better. <laughs> Honey, after the fifth Mr. Right, I just can't say, no, really, it was great with a straight face anymore. Number eight, The Adventures of T-Rex. If you were looking for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles meets Alvin and the Chickmunks, then this one's right up your alley. Landing in syndication September 18th, The Adventures of T-Rex introduced us to anthropomorphic dino brothers, Bernie, Bruno, Bubba, Buck, and Bugsy, super-powered incognito crime fighters. These superpowers are split between the brothers in curiously anatomical ways. For Bernie's super-powered legs, Bruno's arms, Bubba's tail, Buck's ample bite, and Bugsy's ability of telekinesis via his eyes. What's more, each character came with an imitation celeb voice. Fairly recognizable at the time as voices belonging to vintage stars Art Carney, Bing Crosby, Jimmy Durant, 
Jack Benny, and even Humphrey Bogard. But he used all those vegetables. Oh, with subs like you, who needs enemies? I'm, I'm just trying to introduce a little culture into the act. That's the kind of culture that needs treating with a strong antibiotic. While keeping their superhero identities under wraps, to even their kid sister Ginger, they'd by day perform in a musical comedy quartet at the Dragon Company in their beloved but crime-ridden Rep City. condition. Make it stop or I will be forced to quit. By night they'd face off against mob boss Graves and his evil establishment The Company, an American Japanese co-production that saw a total of 52 episodes and is often most remembered for the sheer number of times they jammed the title in your face during the show's opening. After these messages we'll be right back. Number 6 Capital Critters Somehow spoofing the federal government with issues ranging from military arms control and drug addiction to racism would turn out to be mildly prosperous when presented in cartoon form. The bringing together of the classic look and familiar feel of Hanna-Barbera art styles and on more than one occasion dark tones of ABC's Capital Critters managed to retain an amusing, brainy, and refined flavor. Perhaps most importantly was the show's emboldening of the concept that, along with The Simpsons at the time, Capital Critters aided in affirming that animation has the potential to entertain on multiple levels. All this political humor veiled in a world that takes place within the walls and basement of the White House in the nation's capital, where the lives of mice, rats, and roaches collide when young Midwestern mouse Max's parents fall victim to exterminators He's left no choice but to move in with his auntie in D.C. Max, voiced by Neil Patrick Harris of Doogie Howser fame, would navigate subterranean adventures with companions ranging from a sewer tub teenage rat to a brain fried frazzled and periodically exploding lab rat named Muggle, played by the unmistakable Bobcat Goldthwait. Honey, I'm home! What are you, rat? You don't want to miss this. All the while dealing with the everyday threat of the White House's resident cats. Capital Critters' January premiere did fairly well, but was scrapped after seven episodes. A lot of people will recognize Capital Critters from the Burger King Kids Club toys circulating in 92. Favorite Capital Critters, Max, Muggle, Jammit, and Presidential Cat. You can collect all four kids, one with every kid's meal at Burger King, where the critters are just waiting to be caught. Yeah. And yet, even more would have tuned in to see the complete 13-episode season later aired on Cartoon Network in 1995. Number 5, Feifel's American Tales. Saturday mornings on CBS kicked off with what seems on the surface to be an instant classic. With the box office success of the 1986 family adventure film An American Tale and its slightly lesser known but arguably just as beloved sequel, Feifel Goes West. A weekly 8 a.m. time slot preceding The Little Mermaid sounds like it would do great in the ratings. Unfortunately, the problem with porting a major motion picture production over to the small screen began to show seconds after its debut. Firstly, the opening theme and visuals are thoroughly uninspired, to an extent that not even a diehard fan of the film clad in rose-tinted glasses could look past. Then come the voice changes. It's expected the alterations will be made in order to cut costs, but a little more effort could have gone a long way. Several main characters' voices were retained for the show, but even with that knowledge, you could almost swear they're not. Five whole. Where are you? Due to the flat and sometimes almost unintelligible deliveries, as if they may have captured the lines in as few takes as possible. There's also an unshakable aura that the dialogue and interactions between the characters seem distant and ultimately underwhelming. Tuning your violin again, Papa? Just in case they ask me to play at the cheese festival today, Mama. CBS quietly canceled Feifel's American Tales three months into its run. Number 4, Raw Tunage. 
only running for 12 episodes before being canceled wouldn't be enough to land raw tunage in the realm of obscurity. Not often could a show see such a short lifespan and nonetheless provide a launching pad for debuted characters to receive their own future shows. Intended as a compilation of related shorts in the vein of Tiny Toon Adventures. The difference between the two being that Tiny Toon Adventures held at least some semblance of a structured plot from one episode to the next. In the case of Raw Toonage, what you see isn't always what you get. For example, several of the characters featured in the show's opening and promotional ads briefly, if at all, make appearances throughout the season. Notably, Sebastian from The Little Mermaid and Webby from DuckTales are among these. Raw Toonage opened with an introduction by a famous character who attempted to share some of their expertise with the audience. Hi, I'm your host! And today we're going to create a real monster! The host was added to give the show the familiar feel of the World of Disney show, but it simply wasn't enough to draw or retain an ample viewership. Still, the Bonkers shorts would lead to a solo Bonkers debut the following year. The recently obtained rights to Belgium comic strip Marsupialami would subsequently become its own entity as well. Despite being disposed of early, it's worth mentioning the show drew two Daytime Emmy nominations for both the music direction and the writing. Some might have caught one of the Bonkers shorts being shown in theaters during the trailers of the family action adventure Three Ninjas that same year. After these messages, we'll be right back. Number three, The Plucky Duck Show. Just a little loony. And every afternoon, -y, I'm invading your TV. I'm Babsy. I'm Plucky. I work with him, I'm Lucky. For Tiny Toons, I won the best performance by a duck and me. Well, I'm Plucky Duck and not the first or the last attempt by Warner Brothers to feign debuting a new series only to find it's a compilation of previously released shorts masked as a spin-off. The Plucky Duck Show theme song reused the same Tiny Toons intro music with a new take on the lyrics where singing Plucky is big upping himself. Then believe it or not, Warner Brothers pinched that penny even tighter by having the audacity to re-reuse a portion of the lyrics during the It's a Wonderful Tiny Toons Christmas special. Additionally, of the 13 episodes produced, only one installment was original, the other 12 being comprised of the previously mentioned Tiny Toon segments. Once the Plucky Duck show realized its goose was cooked, that lone original episode titled The Return of Bat Duck was edited out. You guessed it and added back as an episode of Tiny Toons. If for nothing else, we may have the Plucky Duck show to thank for forcing Warner Brothers Animation back to the drawing board. Their next attempt years later would see a more successful Pinky in the Brain premiering a similar layout, but with all original content. Number 2, Super Dave, Daredevil for Hire. He's Super Dave Osborne, Daredevil for Hire. This show followed Super Dave Osborne and his assistant Fuji as they used their stunt show as a cover for investigating criminal activity. Dave's stunts often backfiring in no small part to Fuji, resulting in his sustaining severe bodily harm. Hilarious and obvious take on the legendary stuntman Evil Knievel with a rich backstory of countless appearances on Canadian Comedy Hour TV programs his very own variety show, and many his visits on Late Night with David Letterman. Though the Super Dave character debuted way back in 1972, the folks at Fox believed it held enough clout at the time to carry a new concept over to the animation form. Each episode began with Dave narrating the premise of the upcoming show over clips and ending with a live-action Dave introducing and showing stunts recycled from the earlier Super Dave appearances. Early in the show's development, concerns were voiced over Fuji's design. The exaggerated character of the Japanese-Canadian actor was jam-packed with negative stereotypes. His short stature, protruding lip, squinting eyes through enormous glasses to name a few. And when Fuji's impersonated heavy Asian accent was finally heard by a member of Fox's own Children's Network Advisory Board, they'd seen enough and changes were instated. <laughs> What the federal journal? Hey, look, we're all human beings. Everybody makes a mistake. Oh, boy. You're off tomorrow, aren't you? Yes. Why don't you spend the morning doing some errands, and then maybe in the afternoon, you could go f*** yourself. 
Super Dave Daredevil for Hire wasn't renewed for a second season. Number one, Twinkle, the dream being. Originally airing on ABC Family December 5th came the exceedingly family-friendly Twinkle the Dream Being, yellow wish-granting genie Twinkle along with cosmic hirelings Nova and Wishball spent their days fulfilling their desires of the locals in the land of possibility. During 30-minute episodes magical mischief ensues while endeavoring to protect the planet from evil witch Miss Diva Weed, the main villainess of the show and her two lackeys called Hotshots. There was the deadpan Juan and the bumbling Chu. The general premise of the program being to thwart Diva Weed's determination to reign over the timid citizens of the land of possibility and satisfy her need to feed off their misery. Though it was released on video back in 1994, copies in English had since become a rarity to come across and virtually lost in ambiguity. Fortunately, there's good news for fans of the series as in 2022, Twinkle the Dream Being was uploaded in its entirety with English dubbing right here on YouTube. Product of its time, no doubt, and perhaps overly soft in tone, the series simply wasn't going to find a wide enough audience to merit being given a second season. After 26 episodes, it was time to cram this intergalactic genie back into his lamp. Well, there you have it, 10 cartoons from 1992 that ran for only one season. I hope this video brought back some nostalgia of your childhood. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more videos just like this.